Welcome to the San Gregonio Pass. It connects the Los Angeles Basin with Palm Springs and the Coachella Valley. The interstate highway, the railroad, and utilities like electricity, water, and natural gas all move through it. It's also where gusty winds blow from the west into the hot desert most days. The area is known for many things, but wind turbines are the most prominent. More than 1,000 now stand throughout the region, delivering power to the nearby Devers substation to help meet our growing appetite for electricity. As we call them, the windmills are as iconic to this area as palm trees and golf resorts. But many people don't know how they got here. The first commercial wind turbine appeared here in the 1920s. A businessman named Du Oliver built a wind machine in nearby Whitewater and sold shares in his company. It never really worked out and Oliver ended up in jail for failing to have a license to sell those shares. To understand current efforts to capture energy from the wind, we jump to the 1970s. The nation endured a series of oil and fuel shortages, creating a national emergency. The path forward included a new emphasis on energy, using less of it, producing more fuels domestically, and encouraging work on renewable energy. Then President Carter established the Department of Energy, recognizing its importance to national security. At the end of the decade, Southern California Edison tested two wind turbines near its Devers substation north of Palm Springs. At the same time, others were studying winds in the area which NASA once called one of the most consistently windy places in the United States. The studies would attract developers. Fred Noble is a businessman who had recently purchased land near the Edison test site. This land. The parcel was permitted for a mobile home park and Noble planned to see that through. Then he received this letter from Southern California Edison suggesting he consider a wind project. Noble considered it his patriotic duty. Taking a cautious approach, he purchased one small wind turbine and erected it on his property. The results were encouraging. He added seven more machines in 1982 to create the first commercial wind farm in the San Gregorio Pass. In many ways, Noble was in the right place at the right time. Federal incentives encouraged renewable energy production, but California amplified them. The three windiest places in the state became a worldwide focus for commercial wind farms, attracting fortune seekers from all over. We now call those years the wind rush, drawing a parallel to the California gold rush and the fortune seekers of the 1850s. When the tax incentives ended in 1985, more than 4,000 wind turbines stood in this San Gregorio Pass. Some designs worked much better than others, while some failed miserably. Many of the developers and manufacturers left or went bankrupt. Among the designs that performed well, those from Denmark rose to the top. Bonus, Vestas, Nordtank, and Mikon all delivered machines here. Their specs were remarkably similar due to sourcing blades from a single Danish manufacturer. Denmark was the first country to incentivize its wind industry, which then led to its worldwide dominance. After the tax incentives ran out in 1985, the wind industry entered a dark period. The few new turbines that were installed here were virtually all from Denmark until 1993, when wind turbines from California company Kenetech appeared here in the San Gregorio Pass. Using an upwind design like the Danish turbines, the KVS-33 promised to substantially reduce the cost of wind electricity. By 1995, however, worldwide reports of broken and thrown blades began to emerge. It was too much for the company, which filed for bankruptcy in May 1996. Although Kenetech failed, it had seen incredible demand for a wind turbine that could reliably produce low-cost electricity. By the turn of this century, the wind industry seemed re-energized as the smaller companies were consolidating and forming larger corporations. Since then, wind turbines have continued to grow in size and output. Each new machine effectively replaces dozens of older, smaller turbines. More importantly, modern wind turbines are highly reliable thanks to the lessons learned during their early days in California's mountain passes. Thanks for joining me on this brief look back at the history of the Palm Springs windmills. It's hard to predict the future, but it looks pretty bright. One thing is clear, Palm Springs plays a vital role in the energy infrastructure of Southern California. If you're in the area, I hope you stop by Palm Springs Windmill Tours and learn more.